so uh, internet of things can be a potential use case of blockchain it the adoption is far from being mainstream do mm. you agree with our observation or what are the obstacles and risks with this mm. yeah um well i personally feel that uh, when blockchain and iot um really kick off or rather when um iot really starts using blockchain it's going to be a, a game changer for iot i mean you that there's sort of a four parts to this really i mean there's the sort of classic iot of having um computers and sensors in everyday objects um and then allowing them to send data and receive uh, commands back and then you have uh, 5g which gives you um, an immense amount of bandwidth for all these devices which are basically going to be mobile um then you have ai which is a mm-hmm. piece that's going to allow us to quickly assess what's going on with that data because with that quantity of data you um if then statements are really not going to cut it you need to have a sort of a higher level of data interpretation and then i see blockchain and i posted a video on this on linkedin a few days ago as being the well basically like the money of the iot system in if you look uh, an analogy here is that society is run through money flowing from one party to another the, the way we get stuff done is um by somebody paying somebody else to do it and if you look at for example the great depression where you had you know farmers and fields and trains and all sorts of infrastructure but there just wasn't enough money in the system um america's economy ground to a halt um so money's kind of like the the oil or the lubricant of society functioning and i think the blockchain will provide that for iot uh, it's still i'm sure it's still like at least 4 or 5 years off um but i can see blockchain providing that um you know greasing the axles of uh, um the functioning of iot and allowing iot to actually work as a proper um network of things um mm-hmm. rather than little kind of closed environments where you're signed up with a particular you know your your fitbit doesn't talk to your fridge and your car doesn't talk to your house that kind of stuff i can see or rather not even where i'm saying or your stuff i'm talking other people's stuff mm-hmm. that uh, it's going to allow um different parties to actually trade data and services um automatically uh and and pay for it because otherwise why would i allow somebody else to use the data i've gathered um with my iot devices mm. so that, that's my kind of take on that but i know i'm being a bit of a futurist there when i'm i'm sort of putting this forward it's 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 still a way off okay so but have you see are you seeing that the uh, shift is happening towards the direction um well you see little projects here and there right when I mean, we were still all these things are still very much in the sort of pilot phase where it's kind of let's try uh, applying blockchain to one specific supply chain or let's try using blockchain for um identification in this area um it does and we we saw this with the internet or rather with the uh, computer networks you started off with lands where it was um okay i don't have to walk uh I, you know i don't need a printer on every desk i can have a network printer and everybody can use that um and it was really only when all those little separate islands of local area networks were connected and email came along that uh, the internet started having a purpose and then the web was the next sort of killer app for that mm-hmm. um and it took time for these islands to get connected with bridges and i i remember this very clearly because i was an undergrad from 89 to 92 and when i started we had the uh, janet the joint academic network that allowed us to send messages and students were only allowed to send them after 8 pm to not congest the network um you know you only move on sort of 4 or 5 years from that and i was sitting in madison wisconsin um chatting with a friend back in cambridge over irc um but it, it was still 4 years before that actually worked mm-hmm. so uh, these these things build over time and i think there's that thing that um uh you'll always overestimate what will happen in the next year and you always underestimate what will happen in the next 10 so um in, in 10 years from now i think the, it's it's going to look radically different and there'll be a lot more interconnectivity and it will just creep up on us it's pretty interesting the insurance and real estate fields have uh, i mean heavily depend on escrow how could smart mm-hmm. contracts make life easier in those segments 
Yeah, escrow. I mean, that is a really good use case for blockchain because you can basically lock funds up and then release them when certain conditions are met. Mm. And uh, smart contracts allow for that. I and mean, even Bitcoin has smart contracts. You can future date. Um, they're very primitive smart contracts, but that's what triggered the idea for um, um, Vitalik Buterin, who was looking at the scripting language that Nakamoto put in uh, Bitcoin. So um, there's all sorts of clever stuff you can do there. I mean, I, I look at it as a way of some programming money, um, you know, adding a programming language to money. Um, the issue you have with outside the blockchain events is that you need an oracle. You need someone feeding in the data to say, yes, I actually got the keys. Now you can release the funds to the owner. Um, so there's still some problems there that I think are going to be a bit tricky to, um, to solve. Um, because ultimately smart contracts only really operate properly on data that's already within the closed system of the blockchain. So they're great for creating tokens or for automatically moving coins from one address to another. Um, but, but they're not great for saying uh, pay out 100,000 ether if the temperature in Louisiana rises above uh, you know, 42 degrees Celsius or something like that. Because you need some outside party to actually feed that data into the blockchain um, but they'll definitely have a part in it um, mm -hmm. but can uh, uh, IOT come into this picture um, yeah well IOT will provide the data and then you yeah. you have a question of do you trust the data that the IT device is feeding in right if I've got an IOT weather station on my roof and it's feeding data about my local you know humidity uh, air pressure temperature onto the blockchain for some smart contract uh, there's nothing to stop me going and putting a bucket on the um, of ice on the uh, weather station if it's to my advantage. So um, there's still the things can still be gamed, okay. but uh, it can be used to give. There, there are it does give you trust in certain cases where I can see that if there's a transaction on the blockchain that's signed and it becomes valid in a week's time, mm. um, and so I know that I'm going to get paid in a week. Um, the question is, will I actually do the work I'm supposed to do during that week? That, that is harder to ensure. But maybe that's a possibility. It can evolve that way, right? Um, yeah, I, you may have parties who run these uh, IoT devices and they are building a reputation. So they don't want to mess with the system because their the value of their company is in the fact that the data coming from their IoT devices is trusted. Um, but that, that's kind yeah. of everyday business, right? You, you you go and select a plumber because they've got a lot of good reviews on the internet, or you don't choose mm -hmm. this other plumber because they've got a lot of bad reviews. So reputation is important, um, and we can never really remove that, I think. Okay. So what makes uh, blockchain applications patent eligible? Uh, in addition, um, with the research report you shared, how these patents are worth defending? Um, so the thing with a patent is that it needs to be, um, and it needs to satisfy a number of criteria. It needs to be novel, so it can't be something that some, somebody else has already put out there, either patented or just made publicly available. So, for example, the fundamental um, building blocks of blockchain um, cannot be patented because they're covered in Nakamoto's paper, and that's in the public domain. Um, mm -hmm. But if you come up with a new improvement, it doesn't need to be a massive improvement for a patent to be awarded. A slight tweak or a slight improvement uh, can be patented. Now, obviously, the bigger the improvement and the more um, value it provides, the more valuable that patent will be. But th there's nothing stopping you patenting a, a slight improvement. Um, and the other thing is that your new idea cannot be an obvious combination of previous ideas. So. Um, uh, that's covered um, by the patent office as well. If they can take two or three existing inventions and put them together and argue that anybody who is skilled in this uh, particular field uh, would immediately on seeing those three inventions think of your invention, then you're not going to get it either. Um, and then finally, you're not allowed to patent uh, laws of nature or um, you know things like that. So if you come up um, uh, stuff that can just be done with pen and paper can't be patented if your um, idea is to do this with a computer instead. That's also not allowed. Um, but that actually still leaves a huge realm of things that you can patent. Um, and normally as an inventor, what happens is you have a sort of aha moment where you go, oh, right, I've, got, I've identified this problem and I'm looking for a solution and, hey, this would be a clever way to do it. Um, actually, most of the invention I find comes from 
really identifying what the underlying problem is first. And usually the solution actually then just presents itself. It's, it's getting to the bottom of the problem. That's usually the problem. Okay, interesting. So one last question before I wrap up. Uh, mm -hmm. So what are the, your thoughts on the distributed autonomous corporations? <coughs> Sorry. No, DHCs. How should uh, startup investors think about companies aim to building them? Um. Uh, well, I... I mean, I, I looked at the DAO when it first appeared, and of course it had some serious problems which involved in millions being uh, siphoned off by somebody. Um, I'm not, I, when you first become an entrepreneur and you find out about limited liability companies and all the responsibilities you have in terms of auditing and uh, financial reports and accounting and stuff like that, it comes. It came as a bit of a shock to me. I, mean, I was somebody who, uh, you know, I put off paying the telephone bill as long as I can. And then suddenly there's all this paperwork to do now. Um, I can see uh, um, blockchains and smart contracts being used to automate a lot of these auditing requirements. So accounts um, and um, basically self-auditing companies. Um, that's something that I can see, um, you know, DAOs or DACs, um, uh, emerging from that all that kind of admin work uh, basically gets shifted eventually onto the blockchain um, as for companies that are entirely autonomous with no human in control I mean there's that experiment where they um, tried to set up a, a self-governing forest uh, where the you know the, the forest basically owns itself and it orders loggers to come along and cut logs down to uh, raise money to then pay foresters to come and, and, and you know look after the ground and stuff like that. I, I don't, and it, it's supposed to be buying more land, but I haven't seen any reports on that um, in about a year. Um, and you know, I, I I don't know. You know, maybe in 10, 20, 50 years' time, there will be companies that are effectively autonomous, um, but. For the moment, it sounds a bit like science fiction to me. But then again, you know, a lot of stuff that science fiction writers wrote about in the 50s and 60s is now reality and we just take it for granted. So who knows, maybe. And I would guess that if these truly autonomous companies eventually arise, um, they will they will probably be using blockchain for some part of it. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Kerr, for sharing your you know thoughts and uh, sparing your time for us from your uh, busy schedule we really appreciate that we thank you very much for you know this uh, opportunity so we will uh, okay this in our news platform uh, for the benefit of our readers and let's hope for more adoption in the time to come okay well thank you very much for having me and uh, i very much enjoyed it okay thank you right bye then bye bye